Okay. As I 64. That'll build. Uh, register coverage 30. That's gone. Okay. Uh, compare EQQ. So this would look up. Uh, we don't want mem BC. We just want mem. Then that handles divergence. If I just do mem, this handles divergence. Because even if all of them access different addresses, this is going to see if the address at this PC as the indexing mechanism into this one-way TLB if if the last time this instruction executed we read the exact same addresses then uh then we would This will tell us if it matches, and if it matches, we can skip the translation call. We do translate then access. Recent PC, save the current PC for re-execution, access. Access cannot fail. Access is infallible. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, access, MMU access. I don't think there are any early rets. Access complete, divergence, access complete. It is impossible for there to be a failure in an access. Accesses always succeed. Um, okay. Good to know. Good night, Private Orange. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, uh, I gotta think about this. I gotta be careful. Um, MMU access. Before we do a call, we'll do a call to access. Unless that's worth inlining. I don't think it is. I think this is worth calling. If it's right, rotate it. That's the shift in or it in its place. This is a load. Just load that shit up. Literally nothing to do. Ret. Hmm. It might be worth inlining this function. I'm not sure yet. Um, but the calling convention for this depends on what we generated here. MMU access. When we generated this. Uh, write memory from virtual ZMM4, translated address will be in ZMM5. Values to be written will be from ZMM6. So all I have to do is just set up those same things. Translates those into the actual addresses, and then MMU translate. I guess that just always produces in ZMM, ZMM6, hard-coded. No. Um, what is this? We're on reads. If it's a read, read memory from virtual ZMM4. Translated address will be in ZMM5. The returned read values, sign extended, will be stored in, into ZMM6. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to load up ZMM4. Yeah, here's what we do, is we load up ZMM4. So we store these most recently executed things. I would kind of like those to be conditional. So I think that's what we're going to do. JIT key, that's going to resolve the key. Then we're going to look up those. We're going to load into ZMM4, which is the argument requirement. ZMM4, we're going to load up, translate the addresses of ZMM4 into the actual addresses in ZMM5. So we're going to get the results. ZMM4 will contain those. 
Honestly, we can we can. Well, we're gonna want those in ZMM4. Actually, access. MMU access. ZMM. We pass ZMM4, the adder. That I think is used. I shadow it. I shadow it. Oh, that's adder reg. Okay, I don't shadow it. I use that to figure out the alignment. So I need the original address to know the alignment. That makes sense. So it is, I am going to need to make sure that ZMM4 contains that value. So we get the cur PC. We load up ZMM4, that's required. Then compare with equality against whatever the fuck this is. Um, then I just need the, this logic effectively. So this is check if in the TLB slot indicated, uh, indicated by the current JIT PC is a complete match of all the running masks. Uh, all the requested addresses. In which case, check if there's a match. Uh, const. Miss label. Uh, here. We gotta calculate in that in a similar way. Miss label. We'll do that. This TLB miss. And then asm.label miss label. Actually, if it's a miss. If it's a miss, we go to the miss label and we skip what we're about to do. Cool. Then I do an asm.vp compare equality, or actually, uh, this is going to be vmove dqa qa64 into vreg zmm5. Read. Read memory from virtual ZMM4. ZMM4 contains virtual. Um, translated address will be in ZMM5. Okay, so we're gonna load ZMM5 with the memory that is adjacent to the address. So we're gonna do uh, let TLB uh, adder is equal to this. We don't we don't know what these are yet. Right, these are still placeholders. And then TLB trans is going to be the translated location TLB adder. So check if the addresses match the TLB addresses for this specific location based on the running K mask, produce a result into the temp K mask. If the temp K mask matches, if it's, if it's non-zero, one of them missed, and thus we're gonna assume they all missed. Otherwise, we're going to load into ZMM5 from the uh, TLB translation uh, using kmask. And this is load the translated addresses from the TLB. And then in this case, 
we're done. That's literally what this does. It converts four into five. That's it. And we just did that. We converted four by doing one additional comparison, two XORs, a branch, and then we have to add one more branch here because we have to jump to this location. Or we could do the call. We could just directly call access and then jump to the end. Or we could jump to here. I think it's about the same. So asm dot um, label access label uh, translate z uh, virtual addresses in zmm4 to physical addresses in zmm5. Okay, and then this is going to be perform the access of vatter zmm4 using patter zmm5 getting the result into zmm6 which we then write to the respective il register so we have the mislabel and then in this case we're going to do an unconditional jump to uh, branch shorts. I think we can do a short branch in this case. We're going to go to the access label. Okay, and then let's take this access label. We got to generate one. We'll do um, access label access. So that's going to be the access target. This code should build. It does. Okay. It's not going to work. In fact, this might crash or do something unpredictable. Because uh, obviously, we, we don't update those TLD entries yet. And we're using, like, completely invalid shit. Cool. But that's for all mem reads. Okay, so now I need to perform allocations of these TLB addresses and translate uh, locations. And we're going to do that by going into uh, named add name value. And we're going to go for uh, do I want to have a shared TLB for reads and writes? I do not. I actually can't. It is not legal for me to have a shared um, it's not legal for me to have a shared TLB between reads and writes. So I'm going to have read TLB in 0 dot dot 4096. We'll start off there. That's probably too big. Because um, what's an entry? It's going to be 64 times 2 times 4096. That would be 500, 512K. We're gonna we're gonna start here. We're gonna start at a big ass table, and then we'll do ret dot add named value. Uh, okay, we're gonna do ret dot add named value format read tlb this read tlb this and it will be the address. Read uh, ID. We'll do that. And then we'll have the read TLB translate. So we're gonna make a bunch of named values there. Okay. Um, oh, and we got to do per, um, we got to do this for lane in, uh, lanes, lanes, vector width. There we go. For lane in zero dot dot vector width, 
we have to do this. We're going to add, technically, this is going to be the layout. Lane. Lane. Fuck. RTLB. We'll have the read TLB. For the vector width, we're going to have eight different quad words next to each other, and then we'll have eight different quad words next to each other again. For We got the address, then the translate here, and then I need to assert... Um, do I need to have execution state new take this? I do not. I like this more. Uh, fn new on execution state. Unique ID is going to be arc new atomic u size new zero okay this makes sure that i have exclusive access because i haven't returned this out yet this means that i know the indices of these are are fine so what i can do is i can burn while while ret.unique id.load ordering sequentially Consistent, while this is not equal to, while this and, ah, oh, fuck it. Ret dot, let cur id is equal to ret dot unique id dot load ordering uh, sequentially consistent. Ret dot unique id dot store. Uh, current ID plus these are eight eight uh, or these are sixty four bit values so they need to be mod eight right and zero would be at zero eight times eight would be at sixty four so I'm gonna do plus seven and not seven ordering sequentially consistent. This will be uh, 64 byte align the unique IDs. Uh, let new ID is equal to this. And then that'll panic. I'll panic down there. I'm totally fine. When I do add named, that will then allocate a new ID. Okay, so this will make sure, and then if that goes out of bounds, um, then that'll be fine. Because it will panic when I go to add a named value. So 64 byte align the unique IDs. We're going to load the current one. We're then going to round it up to the nearest 8 byte. So we're basically going to discard some padding shit, which is fine. And then we're going to allocate all the TLB entries uh, next to each other in the vectors. So we have eight addresses followed by eight translates, followed by eight addresses and translates for all of the, uh, yeah, for the, all of the different sizes that we have for the read TLB size. Okay. Whew. Okay. Um, okay, so then what I could do is I can do a um, let TLB name is equal to format RTLB this under zero, the lane is going to be zero adder cur pc and oxfff bam then 
We're gonna do uh, execution state dot uh, r15 offset. Let off is equal to this. Uh, execution state r15 offset is equal to uh, of TLB name. This will be offset. YP read TLB translate for the current PC lane zero. Get the execution state uh, for the TLB adder. Or, uh, yep, yeah, TLB name, TLB trans now. Okay. So the address, here we go. Compute the address for this current PC. This, like, in theory, I could just get the 0, zero 001 and then do the offset from there because I know they're all in order. But, like, I might as well do these lookups and. Uh, I just know, I just have more confidence in this, quite frankly. And then if I go out of bounds on my uh, number of lanes, like if I don't allocate enough of these RTLB entries, these will panic and they'll be like, yep, I can't find this RTLB entry you asked for. So we're going to do a request of the address as address, then we're going to do request of the translate as translate. We're going to compare the addresses we want to translate with the TLB addresses that are in that slot. We're going to, on that K mask, then if any of them differ, we're going to go to miss. Otherwise, we're going to load the translated addresses from the TLB into ZMM5, and we'll go directly to the access. I think we literally just implemented it. This is not correct yet because I don't fill in the TLB entries yet. But this has the overhead kind of built in, so we'll be able to see roughly what the overhead of these comparisons are. Because um, this is on every on every memory, we're now going to perform uh, a memory access compare and a conditional branch. So we're always going to miss. And let's see what we get here. Okay. So previously, I think I saved those results off, didn't I? Nope. I didn't. Well... The mem accesses are about the same. So 76, 72, 78, 73, a little bit more expensive. And the 64 is 48, 40. 40. Okay, it's hard to say if those are settled in yet. Um, but it doesn't look like it's a huge perfect. Perfect. Okay, now all I have to do is I have to update those TLB entries. Um, and then here, I'm just going to put an int 3 here. asm.int3. If we if we hit a if we have a TLB hit, that's gonna cause us to hit that in three. Okay, we're not hitting it. I wouldn't expect to. So now after the translate has completed. Actually, I want to move these out, these two. Put these at the top. Oops. We're going to tab these in a bit. Uh, oops, one second. Doop, 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 doop. Okay. going to tab these in a bit. This will give us access to those such that we can update them after the translate completes. We can write 
to TLB trans, we're going to write ZMM, uh, VREG ZMM5. And then at the address, we're going to write in v ZMM4. So we're going to update the TLB entries, update the TLB entries, saying that we translate this address at ZMM4. Successfully, we translated it to uh, ZMM5. Curve PC. Yep. I'm gonna move this up. Cool. So that's based on the JIT PC, so there's gonna be a little bit more noise in there than the target PC. Did you finish what you were working on the other day or decide to switch to something different for a while? What do you mean what I was working on the other day? I've got a lot of projects. Okay, we hit an int three. Holy shit. I guess the TLB is active when I when I run this now. That being said, this is not going to be correct necessarily. Actually, since permissions aren't changing, this is fine. Uh oh, we crashed. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, stream term SSH Fineland. Fineland. Okay. Uh, RV64 test. GDB. Online access. XNI PC. R15 plus the gigantic number. Why is that a crash? X10 XG R15 plus OX70500. Oh, the base is not 64 byte aligned of the vector. Okay, let's see. Fuck. Um. I need to make sure that these are 64 byte aligned. Huh, what am I doing here? I need to make this vector aligned. And I've got code that does that somewhere. The other thing is I can add a typing. I could potentially add a typing onto uh, onto the U64s. No, I can't do that. I have to make a, a. I have to manually allocate this vector aligned. I think unless there's a way to allocate a vector aligned in Rust, and I don't think there is. Um, Vec line, actually. Nope. Um, I could actually do. I could figure out the base of the buffer. Oh, but that'll vary when we clone it. When we clone the box. Shit. Um. Huh. 
<sighs> Values. Ah. Uh. I don't want to do this. Yikes. Uh, I have to allocate the vector aligned. When I clone it, I have to make sure that it maintains its alignment in the cloned variant, which means I might have to manually implement clone. I optionally could make a U64 type that has 64 byte alignment, but at that point it would not be a vector aligned in the same way. I can't have an alignment requirement on making a box. So I think what we're going to have to do, I think we'll manually have to implement clone. I'm actually really surprised this isn't going to mmap where it's getting 4K aligned. Um, but I guess it's not, so that's annoying. So values box. So we're going to have to implement our own clone. That's not too hard. Um, okay. So we're going to do FN alloc vec aligned, uh, T elements, uh, U size. This is going to create an aligned vector allocation. We're going to have to go directly to the layout API. And this is an alloc. So we should be able to call um, actually global alloc is what we want. Out. System allocator. Alec. Perfect. There we go. That's what I want. Center alloc alloc with layout new um, from size align. Size align. And that is a size in bytes. In bytes. Okay. So we're going to have to do uh, standard mem size of t times elements and then the alignments align uh, u size alignment dot unwrap uh, oops dot expect valid alignment and then this is let elk is equal to this assert elk dot is what does it return a mute u8 perfect assert is not null uh vec from raw parts elk as mute t uh, and then I think it's size uh, from raw parts A vector from raw parts. I need to give it the capacity and then the length. Length then capacity. So zero length with a capacity of elements. We're going to assert um, let size is equal to this. Assert size is greater than zero. That handles zero size types. We can also do checked mole handle uh, overflows. 
So we'll do a size of a T, multiply by a number of elements, unwrap that. We'll assert that that is greater than zero. We'll then do a size align of the size align. And then we'll perform the allocation, assert that it's not null. And then we'll return a vector. Um, actually, we're going to do a box slice to make sure that it doesn't get reallocated by vec. So we'll do this. Alloc aligned, box that, and this will be into box slice. Uh, and then I'll need a fill pattern or an initialize routine. Um, yeah, what do I want to do here? That's going to make a box slice out of that, but it will be the wrong length. Uh, Checked mole, greater zero, size align. And then I should also do this, assert that standard mem align of t um, what do I want to do? 64 mod, 64 mod. I want to assert that align mod this is equal to zero. Uh, make sure the alignments are compatible. And that way, if I specified a one byte align, And I did one mod. We want to do the other way. Model line. No, we do want this way. So if this required a 64 byte alignment, if you specified a one byte alignment, one mod 64 would be one and that would fail. But if you did 64, it'd be 0. If you did 128, it'd be 0. If you did 4096, it'd be 0. OK, that's correct. Make sure the alignments are compatible. From size align, boom, valid alignment. Create that allocation. Here we create it. Now we just need an initialization. Um, so I guess we'll do. Uh, let me vec is equal to this and then we'll do vec dot resize with init oops we'll do um, elements init and then we can do vec into box slice and then this will take an init which is a t and this is going to require t is clone I think that's a real function. Layouts. I think this is standard alloc layout. We'll just do this. It's gross for now, but uh, okay. Unsafe. Yep. This is unsafe. Okay, that's also unsafe. The alignment's compatible. We're not initializing anything in it. If we drop it, that's fine. It's zero length, and then we resize it to the number of elements that we want. Perfect. And then that will resize it using the init value to spam out to elements. And then it'll be elements in length. Uh, and then here we'll assert that vec. Here, we'll do this. Let ret is equal. To, we're just going to be paranoid. We're going to assert that ret.as mute slice or as mute pointer 
as mute u8 is equal to elk make sure the base didn't move for some stupid reason it's just really pedantic this will be uh, create a vector that is empty and fill it in convert the vector to a box slice this will be allocate with the requested alignment and then this is uh, compute the number of bytes uh, for the allocation so we got size assert that is greater than zero so we fail on zero size types make sure that the alignment is good then we create an allocation we make sure it's not null then we convert it to a mutable t with zero length and then elements as the capacity we then resize it using a knit that'll initialize everything we then convert it to a box slice and then we make sure that it hasn't moved okay so that's basically uh and then this needs to be mute apparently okay so that'll make sure i get the right alignment and now all i have to do is i have to change this to an alloc aligned with the however many elements I'm interested in. Uh, OU64 is the init. Oh, actually, 64 byte aligned allocation filled with zeros as 64 bit values. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. And then this is going to crash again, probably. Um, because it's going to then clone that and then it will be at a different location because the box. Yep. There it is X and I PC Great, that's exactly what I wanted. So we have to implement our own clone for this. So we'll do uh, impl clone for execution states FN clone self return a self uh, custom clone implementation that maintains 64 byte alignment on values and then here we'll just do execution state names is equal to self dot names dot clone unique id is equal to self dot names dot clone and then let values is equal to Alec aligned and then we'll do values dot copy from slice self dot values mute values values clone the names clone the unique ID and then values we're gonna alloc aligned zero initialize it and then we're gonna copy from the values there and then we won't crash anymore unfortunately that was the correct way to do it i tried to find a hackier way but uh that was probably the best way to do it now it's not crashing now we're running yeah i'm not surprised of course it fucking works all right. Did that do anything for our opera uh, memory operation perf? So what do we do? We have that in place now. All right. Mem read 64. Well, given we didn't apply it to writes, I don't think that did shit. Uh, mem read... 64 40 and it's 40 are you kidding me
We have TLB hits now. Our hit our hit rate must just be absolute dog shit. Uh, bind TLB hits. This. Uh, do this. Update TLB hits. Go to here. This is gonna be uh, read TLB hits. Update TLB hits. Update TLB misses. Read TLB misses. That's going to crash because we don't have those. TLB misses. Y1. Paste. Read. Read. Good. Okay, here we go. So now that's going to keep track of those. We're not printing them yet, but we'll add those prints here. TLB hits. Y1, reset, read, read. Uh, we're going to say this is bind hits. We're just going to yoink that. This will be, um, this is branch. We'll call it bind. And we'll call this read TLB hit rate. Read TLB hits. Read TLB misses. And now we should have those stats. I'm actually really glad I added that, like, string database. I think that's going to come in handy. Read TLB hit rate 75%? Fuck off. No way. Really? Like that's saying we have a 75% hit rate. Jump to the access label. Then we call access. Okay, let's, uh, I'm gonna get rid of this load. This should catastrophically fail. I just wanna make sure that this catastrophically fails. I wanna make sure that it's actually using that result. It should just like, it, it shouldn't even execute anywhere. Great. So I'm pretty sure that works. Okay. So. Thirty six. Oh, let's just let's run this for long enough for it to stabilize. Um, you know what? It, it might be because my TLB is too big. FFF.
let's go to a much smaller TOB. Our hit rate should go... Our hit rate should be much lower. But this is like a tiny TLB. That TLB actually was... That won't be able to fit in L1. That won't even be able to fit in L2. And that might be the issue. Yeah, 4% TLB hit right now. Memory 42. Okay. Now we'll go to FF. I think I might not want random accesses at the TLB. I might want to explicitly make them in order. Um, and that way the TLB accesses will be linear as memory accesses occur throughout the program. Wow, we get a 51% hit rate. But that's just not doing much. That's pretty crazy. Um, I'm going to hit the head. I'll be right back. I got some ideas. Wonder how often alignment checking is getting hit? Every single instruction. Every time. 36. This is 70 now. And it was 76. It's actually not that big of a difference, to be honest. Huh. Memory 32 is... I mean, that's actually not terrible for a 50% hit rate. Jump out. Thanks for the f sub, dude. Hell yeah. Alright, I think I'm going to... Hmm. I think I'm going to... I'm going to change the way the TLB works a little bit. I'm going to get the PC early on. Right away in this function. Right, right at the start of the JIT. I'm going to get the PC... This is going to be the, I'm going to have a, um, let read TLB index is equal to IDX is equal to asm dot, uh, get instatter. Um, and then we're going to end it with OXFF or actually, um, uh, Const TLB entry uh, read TLB entries. Uh, we'll set this to U size. We'll say 
actually FFF in this case now. Uh, mask to use for read TLB entries. Yes, this is Rust. Okay. Then get inst adder and that with this. Make this mutable. And then on every read, on every read, we're actually going to calculate the TLB index. We're going to recalculate it to be plus one. This will make sure that the TLBs are in order. If they're like eight reads in a row, the TLBs will be in the same order, so it'll be a streaming access. This will be read TLB index. Read TLB index. So it will start out as the JIT address. So that's like a relatively random thing that will kind of vary a lot. And the read TLB entries. So we'll mask that. And it's deterministic with respect to the code that's being executed. Uh, and the entries. And then we add one. And then and by the entries. So we're always in bounds. And then we set that as the TLB offsets. OK. So now we can use a larger TLB, and we'll hopefully have things a little bit more cache local. Like, we might miss the first access of the TLB, but then the like subsequent ones in the same function are likely going to be hot. And they might be in order. Uh, we have a 75% hit rate now. I'm thinking of expanding memory slices, like zooming into Google Earth. Set allocating new memory pages. Interesting. Writing a RISC-V emulator. In this case, I'm working on kind of the generic core of my emulator. Uh, in this case, I happen to be working on the RISC-V one. But what I'm doing right now will affect all of the targets that I emulate. So this is generic like compiler optimization stuff. OK. Um, we got a 75% hit rate. 35 psych op. Memory to eight. I just don't get that. I, I don't understand how I didn't get a bigger perf improvement. Uh, let's keep an eye on memory eight. Uh, 70, actually, memory eight will have the least benefit. Memory 64 will have the largest benefit from this pass. So 35.39. And then I'm going to disable the TLB. Uh, and I can disable it by just doing this. It'll do all the math. And then we'll have the miss rate and stuff. Thank you all for the follows. So many follows today. Cheers. OK. It was 3539. And now it is 5446. Wow, that's actually a pretty good speed up. 54.46 divided by 35.39. Uh, 35.3. Uh, oops. 54.46. Uh, 35% speed up? So I kind of have an idea that I could actually implement a cache. I could actually cache the results of the reads. 
and rights. So rights would actually go to the TLBs, and then when the TLB misses on a write, it would be written out to the actual memory. And then I can kind of buffer some of the reads and writes and not do all the translations and merging and shifts in mass. I, I actually don't know if that would help me too much. Um, I, yeah, I don't know if that would really help me here. MMU access. Is it the act of doing the call? Yeah, I'm definitely going to be bottlenecking on... Mm. I, it might be... It might literally be the act of me performing a call instruction. Because the MMU access... For a 64-bit access... Let's take a look. Everything that affects assembly. 8-byte access, no shift. So nothing gets emit. I guess I have to do the perm, compare. I have to check for divergence. If there's divergence, which I'm, which I'm not hitting, if there's divergence, I go to the, div the divergence access, but I'm not, I'm not diverging right now. I don't care about that perf right now. Am I diverging right now? I don't think I am. Yeah, I shouldn't be. All the VMs are the same. As a memory bus, oh my god. <laughs> yes, I will store all of my data in light. Just flying around in a circle. Uh, what do I want to do? That's what LCD panels are? Interesting. Okay, so I'm checking for divergence. Is it just my... Is the perm Q just that expensive? The A perm? Do I want to intentionally not support divergence? Because right now I support divergence in this TLB, but that might be hurting me. I'm going to temporarily disable divergence, which I don't think I have. Um, so this is the code that's responsible for checking if there's uh, divergence. We're not going to check for that. We're going to extract the address we want to read from. Perm Q that, move Q to get it. Then, if it's a write, it's not. If it's a read, load it. Nothing to do, shift and, okay. Let's see what this did. This is a danger. Danger zone. But I want to see what kind of perf we're getting here. Yeah, we're all sp small brain here. Um, how did that not help? Read till we hit rate. Why did my hit rate go down? Wasn't it like 75%? Risk five hype. 41%. Hit rate. Why, why did my hit rate change? 
These shouldn't affect my hit rate. If they are, then I have divergence. Oh, I turned... I turned off... Uh, I turned off the TLB shit. Okay. So now we'll comment out the divergence. Okay. Now we're going to see how much that saves us on costs. Thirty-three. We started at like sixty or something. Hmm. How much is VP VPerm Q? Uh, instruction tables. <sighs> Knights landing. V from Q. Yeah, I gotta know how. V from Q. 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 V V I. No, I'm doing V V V. It's f really cheap. Three to six. Where are we losing our perf then? All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try something. I think I'm gonna try something. Uh, here we're gonna load the contents. We're gonna say, um. Okay. Is this TLB sane? Since I'm since I have different sizes, it's not. I have to have different sizes for the different axes I do. Otherwise, it's technically not valid. Uh, but we'll worry about that in a bit. Um, if let I'll inst mem read 64 dot dot is equal to inst. We're only going to do this on 64-bit reads. And then here's what we're going to do. I'm going to directly read into output from RDX. RDX. I'm going to extract from the translate address. Oops. Um, and this is TLB trans. We're going to permute TLB trans, no K mask into ZMM0. We're going to move that into there. So we're going to directly, we're literally just going to bam. We're going to grab that. Then we're going to read the entire 64-bit thing into the output. And then access label, we're temporarily going to move to the end. And that's the end of the instruction. Now we're no longer calling the access function, but we're doing the same thing for the 64-bit case. Grab the translated address, extract, and then read the entire thing in one swoop. Let's see what that did. That's still slow as shit. Huh. 3421. Okay. I'm going to get rid of the hit tracing stuff. 
false. I'm going to move this to right before translate. OK, no assembly has been generated yet. At this point, I'm going to compare the address with the TLB address. I'm going to do this. If we missed, I'm going to go to the miss label. If we didn't miss, I'm going to perform the load. OK, this is like a, as little as I can possibly do. And we're ignoring checking for divergence. Thirty-eight, thirty-three. I'm guessing that the target code is just missing caches that much. Like these are probably real TLB misses. It's probably what it is. Yeah. I, I probably literally can't do anything. So now I could potentially implement my own cache in software to try to move some of the slow axes of the, yeah, I could implement my own, um, I could in my, implement my own cache that could make sparse accesses in the target address space more local in the host address space. But I don't think that really benefits me much because these are full cache lines. The accesses I'm performing are full cache lines. So I actually don't benefit at all by moving memory around. I, I literally can't. I, other than like TLB locality, there's really nothing I benefit from there. Okay. Update misses. Here we go. Miss label. This. What did we change? I'm going to undo everything in that file. Okay. And I'm going to have to have a TLB per access size and then we'll have to work on the right TLB and the right TLBs we'll have to clear out does implementing cache and software make any sense if you're running on a CPU that has a cache um, if if I could make sparse accesses denser then yes but I don't think that's gonna be the case okay we got a 77% hit rate on the read TLB and now we need to make these um, we need to make these TLBs per um, per size, and then we have to do the right TLBs. The right TLBs, I think I will actually get a pretty big speed up out of, off of. Maybe. Maybe. I don't remember where my right benchmarks were, but... Yeah, I mean, we're, we're literally just bottlenecking on memory accesses at this point. And the Xeon Phi doesn't have an L3 cache. So there's actually a chance that this code would be significantly faster on a um, on a Skylake that has like a, a full full blown Xeon with AVX 512. Okay. We're gonna resolve this JIT key. Oops. Grab the JIT key. We're going to slide it up to the top. That's going to give us the access size. And then we're going to use that to index the TLBs. Our TLB and then the access size. Uh, and this will be JIT key dot zero. We'll do this now. So now the size of the operation will be part of the key for the TLB. And this will be the translate. Our trans. 
And then the access label. If I implemented a cache, I could potentially bypass some of the like shift and masking I do. Maybe some of the more complex uh, checks that I do. No entry for key. Great. Okay, so we're gonna do. We're gonna set the size to FF. Read TLB entries, and then here we're gonna change this to 256, and then four size in zero dot uh, uh, one two four. Eight. Now we got all these. And I did size lane. I think I did size lane. I got to make sure those match RTLB under. Yep, there we go. JIT key zero. So it's the index JIT key, which is the size, and then the lane. And then we have a 256 entry. We've got a 256 entry TLB for each uh, different read size so if the read translate succeeds then we're good and then we just need to add probably we might need to add the versioning stuff on the tlbs so that we can invalidate them quickly that's going to be something we're going to need to do for writes that's going to be important 37 cycles what were we getting before 40 Uh, 63, 67, 76, 36, instead of 40. Ah, uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty minor improvement, to be honest. Really disappointing. Uh, I need to add a version field. Such that I can invalidate all the caches in one go. How am I going to do that? It'll have to be based on the entry. And I can have a I can have a TLB version identifier. Yeah, 36. Hmm. If false, I'm going to disable the TLBs. I want to see what the benchmarks are again. Just in case I change some of the programming environments. Or some of the, some of the things about the, the program. Uh, track the misses and get rid of the updates of these. Technically, I can get rid of this. Okay. This has all the read TLBs just fully disabled. Completely ignore them. I really thought I was going to have like a 3x here. I thought I was spending all my time in translation, but I, I guess I'm not. Yeah, 36. Okay, we'll grab these. Oops. This. Okay. That's without the TLB entirely. Update those, update that. And then enable the TLB.
I, I actually don't know if it's just gonna change anything. How are my lookups in the train? How's the how are the translations so fast? What the hell? Thirty-seven. Yeah, it's slower. It's slower. Memory 32 got faster. Memory 64 is the same. Memory 8 got slower. Okay, and then I guess I can try I can try the big the big cash the big TLBs I bet this would be a lot faster on a on a on a big old Xeon I'm probably hitting memory so much, like true main memory. I'm just hitting it so much. Forty one. That's even worse. Ninety eight for memory to eight. Holy shit. Uh three F. Let's like really cut down on those. Hmm. 43. Oh, that's a 25% hit rate. That's pretty bad. I guess... One F. Just the the raw memory we're running, just mission missing cash is so hard. Man, I need a larger cache. I need a processor with like a massive L three cache. I think is what I need. Yeah, I don't think this is helping at all. It's I, I'm so surprised. I don't understand how the MMU axis is so slow, but the the translate, which has a loop of like derefing multiple pages, is somehow. Let's uh let's turn divergence on. I bet this helps if there's divergence. It's probably a relatively large improvement with divergence. All the numbers are gonna be much worse now. Oh we had a crash. Uh GDB. I don't know what would be causing a crash here. Unless this TLB doesn't handle divergence, but I think it does. XNI PC. XNXG RDX plus 40. About 40 hex. Whoa. Whoa. 
something's not correct about this TLB. Um, RT will be d -d 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 -d. RDX plus forty. What is going on here? Actually, you know what I need to do? There's a bug there. I'll figure that out at some point. I'm going to turn off all this perf logging stuff. There's a chance that the perf logging could be like heavily influencing the results. And I'm just going to see if the raw performance with all 256 threads running is better or worse. Because having those M fences in there could potentially be like really hurting some of the like ability for the like prefetcher to get up and running and like actually do things. So we're gonna try we're just gonna try and see what our overall performance is with the TLB and without the TLB. And then this won't be tracking. Yep, we won't be tracking the hits or anything. This is just chugging. And we'll see what these numbers are. The raw fuzz cases per second numbers. What's going on? Is it stuck? Um, I'm going to disable this TLB. I think the the branch indirect TLB seemed to work. I'm, I'm pretty sure that one was fine. Uh, with vectorized emulation branching, you block all lanes that aren't following the follow lane, and then the, the block lanes only get unblocked if the follow lane branches to the same target code path. Yep. That's kind of how that works. Oh, I like really killed the startup time, I think. I think by having too many, by having so many, so many different TLBs. It just makes the clone of those really slow, I think. Let's see. It's the it's because I name all of these. I'm just going to do this. RTLB. I'm going to add RTLB for this address. Um, add a name value. RTLB uh, for size. And then... Ret dot... Oh, I can just do this. Uh, 64 byte align them. And then let cur id plus equals equals cur id plus uh, 256 times 2 times number of lanes.
Okay. Um. Current ID is current ID plus 256 times 2 times 4. 256, oh, times 8. Number of TLB entries, number of lanes per TLB entry, number of, uh, that's like data and address, and then the number of different operation sizes. Okay. Add named value. Here, I can just do this. For size in uh, one, two, four, eight. I can at least do it by size. That That's not too much crap in here. Add a name value, uh, oops. 64 byte align, get, add one named value, and then add the rest. Cry deep, plus this number of TLB entries, lanes per entry, uh, two different fields per, and then four uh, sizes, but we don't have that anymore, yeah. 256 times 8 times 2, minus 1, because we have 1 that we already created, and then, cool, then we just update it. That should be fine. This will now panic, because we got to change kind of the logic of what we do here. So we're going to do uh, let tlb name is equal to format rtlb JIT key, and then let offset is equal to this. Cool. And now I can compute based on the read TLB index, I can convert these. So we'll do offset plus read TLB, uh, let A off is equal to offset, which is the, comp the, the total offset plus the read TLB index times eight times two. Yep, eight times two. And then that maxes out, perfect. And then we'll do this. And this will be T off, it's T off and A off. Okay. Uh, read TLB entries, I64, that's fine. Whoa. Okay, maybe not. Uh, as you size. Well, the problem is that this that should do it. Oh, and then this is plus eight. Whoa. Times eight. Because we're talking about byte offsets now. Uh, index as I64. It'll alignment fault if it's wrong pretty hard. But this will be the address offset is the TLB index times eight times two times eight bytes, then in this case it is, so this is computing in quad words. I can make this so much fucking cleaner. I can just do this uh, times 64 times two. 
It's the same fucking thing. Times 64 times 2 plus 64. So TLB index times 64 times 2 because there's two 64-byte entries per TLB uh, entry. And hopefully this gets rid of the overhead. Dude, why is that taking so long to start, man? All right, I think that's working. And this is with the TLB is disabled, 5.8 mil. I think that's what we were getting before, right? That sounds about right, 5.8 mil. We were getting 5.6 before our TLBs on the branch indirects. So I'll say 5.81. And now we'll enable the TLB, the use of these TLBs. Yep, times 64 times two plus 64, yep. I think we should be fine here. Honestly, might be an improvement. That's with FF. Oh, there it is. It's back. Uh, I don't know. 5.9? Let's drop that down to only using 16 entries. Like a 1 to 2% improvement. Yeah. I don't think it's, it warrants the code complexity increase, to be honest. Ah. Uh... <laughs> uh... <laughs> what? What? Really? Six point six point four? I'm gonna see if that repros. Thinking thinking face? Maybe two fifty six is too many. I mean that I I would say that's that's reproducing the results. Hmm. Yep. Uh, hopefully I can do this. I'm going to go for the massive, the massive TLB. Hopefully the startup time isn't outrageous. I, I don't actually know what's causing it. I think it's, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how fast this starts up. I think it was copying the like huge name database. Yeah. 5.8. Okay, let's make sure we fully remove the TLB. Um, read TLB entries. We're gonna say, uh, No accesses, if false, fully disable the TLB. And then we will remove these updates. I just want it to be 100% fair. I want to make sure we have a, a true baseline of with the TLB completely non-existent, not even updating the entries in the TLB. 
because I want to make sure it wasn't 6.8 before. Right would benefit a lot more from the TLB. Oh, yeah, it was 6.9 before. Yeah, the TLB is just strictly hurt performance. Let's see what just updating the TLBs does. Let's see. Just writing these out, I think, is just gonna is really gonna hurt perf. E oh, wow. Well, that's with the FFF. If we go to the F, yeah, just the act of writing those out is killing perf. <laughs> Thanks for the follow, guys. Hell yeah. It's almost bedtime. So this is just with F. I think it's just going to hurt perf too much to just even write out these entries. Yeah, we're losing perf by just writing out with a TLB of, of F entry. Yeah, it's, yep. Um... Nice. Cool to know. Uh, git commit am read tlbs. They're disabled right now. Okay. Uh, dupe read tlb. Timeouts. Okay. Oops. Fuck. Oh well. Knew that was going to happen. So now we just do grab those, move that into ZMM4, extract the current PC, log the most recently, executed one, translate and access. Okay, 6.8, yep. I don't know, It. Uh, I think we're just getting punished by not having an L3 cache on the Xeon Phi's, and that might be a reason why it might be faster on a conventional system. Let me look at what my cache hier hierarchy is on the Phi. Uh, SSH Philand, cat proc CPU info. This is not tell me my cache hierarchy. All right. Um, Xeon Phi 7210 wiki chip. Night's landing. Thirty-two L one I, one meg, shared between cores within the tile. So thirty-two K per core, eight way associative. That's uh, that's the same as basically anything except the most recent, um, Xeons, which now I think they bumped it to sixty-four K of L one, which is nuts. Uh, L two cache. One meg shared between cores within tile. I think the tile, how many tiles are they? Tiles actually might be eight. 
It might be like really highly shared. Um, I forget what the tile sizes were. I think it is eight. I think there are eight total tiles on it. Um, Knight's Landing tile. Is it always 36 tiles? No, that's probably the that's probably the 72 core. Yeah, that's probably the 72. Uh, so 64, they're probably 32 tiles. So you probably have 512k of L2 per physical core. Yeah, it's two core. It's two cores per tile. Okay. Um. Let's take a look at uh, um, wiki chip uh, second second gen scalable. I need to know what these are. Xeon scalable, actually platinum. Cascade Lake SP might do it too. Take a look at the platinums. Um, Cascade Lake. These are Cascade Lake based. Total L1 and L2. So these are one meg per physical core. So it would be twice the amount of, wow, that would be twice the amount of, um, that's pretty nuts. Huh. Twice the amount of L2 per core, and then L3, that's shared between whole processor in this case. I guess all the Cascade Lakes are the same. Cascade Lake SP. Cascade Lake, come on. 32K per core L1, 1 meg per core L2, 1.375 meg per core L3. That should be shared between the whole processor, I think. So that would be twice the amount of L2. Wow. Okay, um, I actually need to run these numbers. Uh, let me buy a high-end Azure node quick. Um, uh, portal. I really need to see what these performance numbers are on a on a full blown um, Skylake because if I'm if I'm really bottlenecking on true memory accesses, I thought I was bottlenecking on my soft MMU lookups. I really thought I was, in which case. I thought I was going to be able to get like a 3 or 4x, uh, but there's a chance that I'm truly bottlenecking on on memory accesses on the Xeon Phi. And like, all right, so let me make a VM quick in Azure. Ubuntu server, LTS, that's fine. Oh, I've got to do this under my own account. All right, uh... It's going to take me like probably four or five minutes to get one of these uh, VMs partitioned. But let me set this up. I need to make sure uh, AVX, actually Cascade Lake Azure. I don't know if there's Cascade Lake yet in Azure. Uh, what about EC2? What are these running? They'll be powered by the 
Uh, by custom second gen, based on the Cascade Lake architecture, with sustained all core turbo frequency at 3.6 gigahertz and maximum single core at 3.9. C5's instances. Okay. Um, I don't have an AWS account, so let me uh, let me get an AWS account. Because I guess Azure doesn't have second gen Z on scalable. And if I can run this on Cascade Lake, I would really like to because it's going to be... Those are the numbers that I would have. I really need to figure out um, these perfs. Uh, I guess we'll make an AWS account. And then I'll, yeah, I'll make one of these. Actually, a C5 metal. I don't know how much that's going to be, but that's what I would like. Let's go. I can't believe Azure doesn't have Cascade Lake yet. Uh, second gen scalable. Making an AWS account. Uh, professional. Most labs. Okay. Uh, Okay, and I gotta validate a fucking phone number. Uh, I'm actually surprised I didn't have an existing AWS account. Cool. Good. Basic plan. Is there anything I should know setting up EC2? Any tricks? Uh, oh, basic, that's just support. Yeah, fuck that. I don't need support. Free. Log into the console. Let's fucking go. Let's rip some cores. I want a two-factor all of this too. All right, let's see what we can do here. AWS. Uh, launch a virtual machine. And which one do I want? C5. This zoom is going to fucking kill me. Okay. Uh, I want Debian. Ubuntu. LTS. Six, uh, 64 bit x86, 1804. Let's go. Let's give me the fuck you ones. Uh, compute optimize C5 metal. Metal. What's C5N? Uh, C5N metal. C5 metal. I'm guessing metal is bare metal. Like, I get the whole fucking thing, right? 
for the interns when you need them. <laughs> uh, C5 metal. What, C5N metal? C5D metal? This is what I want. I want 96 cores, 192 gigs of RAM. Just give me the C5 metal. What is metal? Oh, N. N. Oh, that's Skylake SP. No, fuck off. First or second gen or Cascade Lake. C5D, local NVMe S SSDs are physically connected to the host server and provide block level storage. Oh, that's nice. But I don't really care about disk. C5 metal. Didn't we have... Okay, it's just C5 dot metal. That is Cascade Lake. All right, here we go. C5 large, C5 metal, right? Uh, can I get a can I get a price estimate, please? Currently selected, 96 vCPUs, second gen, 70, uh, 8275 cloud, perfect. I'm guessing metal means bare metal. Amazon EC2 metal instance. Bare metal. Direct access. <laughs> oh yeah, we're fucking going. Uh, configure details. Yes, just one. Um. Storage tag. SSH. Review and launch. Open to the world? Yeah, let's fucking go. I'm not scared. SSH. I have no idea how I'm going to auth to this fucking thing. Uh, bare metal. Yeah, let's fucking go. Oh, nice. Uh, choose existing. Choose an existing. No key pairs found. You have to download it before you can continue. Oh. <sighs> Okay, fine. Uh, space moose. I don't know why I can't use my existing SSH key like I can with fucking Azure. That would be nice. And and now the website's broken. Great. Launch. What do you mean until my validation is complete? Oh, fuck off. Come on. Do I need to do I need to click on an email? Oh, confirmation. Okay. Just a key pair to connect. Cool. This, this. This. No. Delete. Yes. Uh, 
huh. Usually takes minutes. Well, it's been minutes. Let's go. Son of a bitch. Why don't they want my money? <laughs> Request for accessing resources in this region is being validated. How long is this going to take? It's, it says four minutes, but I'm, I'm calling bullshit. Users. You'll send me an email. Am I drunk? No. Um... Yeah, what is this? Oh. Uh, all right, I'm going to Google this. Show me. Show me info. Does no one, like, get this? Is it because I, like, literally just created my account? I just, I just don't understand this shit. Ugh. Oh. Oh. Well, let me get more. Okay, that's good. We got a new error. Go here. Just let me run cores. Why do I need to request access? Service limit increase. EC2 inst instances. Oh, I'm a pleb, so I can't region. I don't, I don't care. Are they, like, really concerned that I'm going to use up all their resources by sp spinning up one node? God damn, I fucking hate cloud, man. I guess I can use a, a, tw a, a 12x large. Oh, I hate this shit. Dude, just let me, just... Take my fucking money! <laughs> Why? Why do I have to ask for more cores? Just let me run cores! Holy shit, that's annoying. Ha! Oh. Okay. Add an instance type. Free tier legible? Wait, do I have to do I have to pay? What the fuck, dude? This shit is so stupid. Dude, I just I just want some fucking cores, okay? <laughs> huh. Uh C5 12x large. C5 12 X large second gen 8275 actually I'm curious what these are yeah 12 X large second gen platinum let's go yes I want this it's not illegible holy shit Dude, uh, like, why do I need a fucking subscription? Just bill me for the hours that the server is running. God, fuck clouds, dude. 
I really hope this all all this cloud shit just fucking vanishes. I'm so sick of this shit. Dude, it's so annoying. Literally anytime you want to do anything, you can't do shit. Let's fucking try it. Let's see what happens. Apparently it works, even though it says it's not eligible for the free tier. <laughs> I've got the free tier. I don't know if this automatically upgraded me. I, did, I didn't get any estimates on the costs. That'd be kind of nice, to be honest. Running in Ohio. All right. Um, uh, um, okay, that's the sage. Do do do. Now we just wait. I love how there are, like, so many messages and warnings that, like, seem to not matter, apparently. Or it's going to air out at the last minute. But hopefully these cores are still good. I really wish I could have tried it on bare metal, because I, I really don't trust clouds to give me actual compute. I really don't. Google Cloud is easier. You just get some initial money to spend. Google Cloud. Um, Xeon Scalable Second Gen. Come on. Oh, and... Okay, that's nice. Uh, oh, they've got Second Gen. Huh. Well, we'll see how this goes. Now launching. I don't know if there's going to be anything non-public here running. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, SSH add. Where's my pub key? Or my private key? Space news cannot wait. SSH agent. Okay. SSH add. Why can't this? What? What? Why can't I have my agent running? I, I don't understand why I have SSH agent running and it seems very confused. Um... Okay, let's figure this out. Yeah, it is a quantum computer. Ex 
Because I know that... <sighs> blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay, how do I set up this key pair? Dude, I will say... It's a lot more annoying than... Uh, okay, change user... A lot, it's kind of a lot more annoying than. Uh, oh, here we go. Do, do, do. Uh, oops. There we go. Yes. We in. I am in. Let's do this. Uh, stream term CD downloads this. Okay. Uh, cat proc CPU info. All right. H top. Good. Hopefully these cores are usable. Um, and then CD downloads, SCP dash I space moose. Oh, we'll go into, I know this font's small. Uh, we're going into bulk IL, or actually RV64 test, and we'll deploy. Okay. SSH. Whatever the EC2 shit was. This. SSH this. Copy the shit here. SSH here. Set up my downloads. Space moves dot pem. Okay. Hey, we got to send up the binary too. Yep. Uh, What's the name of the file? This C tags risk v SCP file and this dot cat deploy uh, basically want this C tags risk v to here. Oops. Well, that's fine. Okay, deploy. And oh, we need to change how many how many threads do we have? Forty seven or forty eight. Okay, forty eight threads. Let's go. Let's see how this performs. Okay. Wow. That is largely outperforming the Phi. That is largely outperforming the Phi. Well, I guess maybe I'm done with the Phi then. Maybe it's time to move past it. Maybe the phi isn't for me anymore. Holy shit. 
That's some good perf. Um, 11.5 mil. And are these physical cores? Siblings 48, core ID, CPU cores. Siblings 48. Yeah, what are these? Uh, nope. Uh, seven. Eighty-two seventy-five L. Uh, CL. Twenty-four cores, forty-eight threads. I'm guessing that's what I have. I'm guessing I I have a full. A full processor with threading. Uh, I guess we can kind of test that. We can go to 24, and we can see if our performance is really close to the 11 million. If we're at like 9 million. If we go to half, if we go to 6 million, then we might have physical cores. Um, but I'm guessing this will be like 9 million, because we're probably using hyper-threading here. Yeah, cloud is expensive. I, I I don't plan on actually running on something like this. Yep. There it is. There's the 10 mil. So, yes, it's definitely uh, 48 hyper threads. Obviously, we got to speed up with hyper threading, which is great. Um, I don't know. We, do we try the TLB shit here now? Uh, if true... TLB FF. Two fifty six. All right, let's try this. We'll see if we uh, benefit from this. I'm guessing this is just going to hurt perf. Eleven point eight six. And this is with the TLB active. Yeah, we're using the TLB. Okay, so let's go to FFF. Change this to 4096. One nice thing is that my startup times are a lot faster on... Uh, on the non-fi because it's like 20 times faster single threaded. So the single threaded like startup times are much better. Like once once this is shipped over and we just start executing it, it just like immediately starts booking it, which is pretty neat. Yeah, it starts fuzzing like right away. Is that a speed up? Why does that 15 meg binary? Because it's got full debug symbols. Okay, let's try one. How expensive is this server? 82. It'd be pretty close to like one of these. Eleven point four. Okay. Yep. We're definitely affecting perf. Uh, straight. Just a single f. Uh, vim. Cargo. Dot toml. Debug is false. Oh, it's got a larger L three. Google Cloud, you can buy anything they have with it. That's nice. Okay. 
Okay, 11.2 FF. We actually might benefit just slightly from the TLB here, from the read TLB, but not much. Eleven point six million, and then if I get rid of the TLB, if I disable it, false, and then comment these two out. So we saw like eleven point nine with the four thousand ninety six TLB. Eleven point six. See if that repros. FFF. Eleven point six seems stable. So let's see if this is eleven point nine again. If it is, then the TLBs technically do help very slightly. Um, It's like a 2% speed up, 2 or 3% speed up. Yeah, we're in t the we're in the 12 territory. Okay, the TL the TLB logic does help. Huh. Yeah, 5%ish. That means we'd get another 5% or so on the right side. Actually, we'd probably get 10% on the right side. The right side speed up will be better, um, just because the rights have to update the dirty bits in the like page tables. Although uh, we also would have to have a versioning check or to clear out those entries. So I don't know. It's hard to say if it's worth the code complexity. Uh, I would need to do more benchmarks on that. But this is running twelve point one. And then a lot of time with the VM exit handler. Yeah, we're just we're running these VMs so much faster. We're actually bottlenecking a little bit on VM exit. So we could get a 2x. We could get up to 28 mil on this box. We could probably get to like 20, 22, 23 million. Uh, it's because I'm skipping the translation. I'm bypassing the soft translation. Okay, uh, we've got 28 million. Yeah, I think I could do like 22, 23 million a second, probably, with some more tuning and optimization for this target. Remember, this VM exit shit is really poorly implemented. Um, but yeah, that's... Uh, Perf's actually really good here. And what happens if I turn off the other TLBs? Um, for new line, here we go. I'm gonna turn these TLBs off. I wanna see how, how much of those help. So it was 12.1 million. In before 10k bill. I mean, yeah, this is probably like a $10,000 a month instance, I would guess. Probably in that ballpark. Yeah, I got a pretty good speed up from these. But actually, not as much as I do on the Fi. Uh, and let's turn on instruction counts. Falkyl RV64... Uh, I count. Yeah. We're going to lose some perf when we have these instruction counts on, but I'm going to be really interested to see uh, how many billion instructions per second I'm getting on this machine. $4,000 a 
43 billion instructions per second, 45 and climbing. That's pretty solid, to be honest. Uh, what is theoretical on the server? We're actually probably really close to theoretical on this uh, server. So this server is a stream term is a 24 core. A 24 core at uh, 3 gigahertz. Uh, we can actually see what it's clocking at. Okay, it's running at 3.1. It's running 3.1 gigahertz when we're doing vectorized emulation. So that's basically the AVX frequency. So we can say that the um, theoretical performance of the server is uh, 24 cores times 8 lanes uh, per VM times 2 instructions per cycle times the clock rate, which was 3.1. 3.1. Oh, this machine actually has basically the same theoretical throughput as the Xeon Phi. The Xeon Phi is actually 1.1 times 64 times 8 times 2. It's a little bit faster than the Xeon Phi. But... Yeah, and we're doing we're doing 50 billion instructions a second, so we're running at 50.2 divided by 1190, running at a 4% theoretical speeds, which is pretty fucking amazing. Like this number is assuming you are literally doing independent operations without accessing memory, only doing register like arithmetic, like adding. Adding in a loop. <clears throat> so I'm really happy with that. Simulating risk faster faster than the current hardware implementation. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. It's actually probably a little bit more than that because we lost a little bit of perf. It's probably like 50, 52 billion instructions a second. We can probably add a TLB on the right side. I could potentially add like a custom caching layer that could maybe reduce some of the shifts and masks. Um, I bet I could get this to 70 to 80 billion instructions a second on this machine. I think with enough effort, enough, enough optimization, and that's probably going to be capped out. That's probably about as fast as you can possibly do this. Obviously, my 32-bit IL could run basically twice the speed, which really sucks. I, like, added all of this complexity, and... I mean, actually, this is running about the same speed as my 32-bit IL. Um, do I have Divergence on right now? I do not. Huh. And then what do I get on the Phi? Doop, doop, doop. Exact same code shipped on the Phi. The spin up time is much longer. We're getting three. Oh, that's because we have the TLBs. The TLBs are killing us now. 11 billion instructions a second. Yeah, I think switching to servers with L3, it, it basically uh, quadruples the amount of cache available. It doubles the amount of L2 available per core, and it quadruples the... Or, and it doubles the L3... Well, it's max in on L3, but it's an extra meg per core. Um... Okay, so, huh, let's turn off those TLBs, turn off the I counts, and we'll turn off the TLBs, 
uh, read TLB index if false uh, uncomment these. Make it a const option already? Yeah, fuck off. <laughs> we'll get to it. I didn't think I was going to make these changes. Three point two? Weren't we getting more than that? Weren't we getting like six mil? What the fuck did I change? Was I looking at effective before? I guess I was looking at effective before. Yeah, the 6.9. That's totally what we were getting. All right. And then on EC2, yeah, it's like significantly faster than uh, 6.9. Wow. Wow. Yeah, just having having memory, man. Having caches. Yeah, this is 23 million. And it's climbing. It'll keep climbing a, a little bit as it warms up more and more. Yeah, it's like 25 million a second. I'll say 25 mil. <clears throat> Uh, 25 divided by 6.9, 3.6 times faster. So if I can get, if I can get one of those, if I can get an 8274, uh, I know the 8274 is not exactly the same due to some of the turboing, but, uh, 8274 what's their what's the cost of that <laughs> add something in cents per second yeah uh, where's my spreadsheet I need my spreadsheet um Okay. <clears throat> what are we running on? We're saying this is roughly equal to a 8274. Uh, sort. I apparently don't have an 8274 on here. There must be a reason for that. Um, might be a cloud-only one. Well, here's an 8270. Clocked a little bit slower, but with more cores, 7.4 grand. This is pretty close. 2448, 3.9. Turbo's to about the same. Caches look the same. TDP is a little bit lower. This TDP is higher. Uh, it probably can run all. It probably can run more cores at the turbo. Um, so this would probably be a, a couple percent slower. Eighty-two sixty-eight. Eighty-two sixty-eight. Um, I'm estimating 28,000 for that server. Yeah, let's fix up these coefficients. Um, 
The coefficients, I think, are... Down clock, turbo. Yeah, this is the megahertz divided by the um, divided by the clock rate. So in our case, we're running. Okay, cool. We can we can run these numbers now. We can update these tables. Uh, so we know that this is on. Uh, it was 50 billion instructions a second. Let's re-enable that so we can see. Um, I'm fine with, it, it's apples to apples, so I'm okay with these comparisons. How fast would it be if you convert it to CUDA? Uh, it'd probably be really slow because you have no caches on GPUs. <sighs> GPUs just can't do random memory accesses fast enough for stuff like this. Yeah, that slightly hurt the perf. 43 billion a second. Oh, we actually benefit quite a bit from the caching then. I'm I'm actually really surprised at how much of an improvement this is. Yeah. Yeah, having that TLB helps. It just doesn't really help on the uh, Fi too much. So. All right. We're going to let this settle in for a second, and then we're going to figure out what the billion instructions per second is. And then we know that this is running. Yeah, it's running 3100 turbo. So 3100. Uh, megahertz on AVX 512, and this is on uh, 8275CL. So that is a nice piece of data to have. And yeah, it's a, a 50, I'm going to say 50, 5178. So I can go into my spreadsheet. Um, and these are, oops, that's for the phi. Are those sorted by phi? Yeah, they are. Okay, cool. Um, so then this, I can say that this, since it's a sky lake, this will perform at approximately Uh, where the fuck was it? Here we go. 5178. 5178 megahertz divided by uh, 3.1, which is the clock rate of turboing. So this is saying per core I'm getting... What? What? I need to rethink this spreadsheet. Um, Oh, that is the total. I need to go to per core. Uh, 50.178 times 1,000 divided by how many cores do we have? 28 cores? No. Yes. Wait, 48 over 2. 24 cores. What? Is it really 24 cores? Oh, it is. Divide that. Okay. 2090. 
There we go. That's our new scaler. So we'll do uh, 2090. Okay, that's saying that that's my megahertz per core on this processor, and then zoom out. We apply these to all of the Xeons. Okay, and that means if we take a look at, if we find one that goes to 3.1, AVX 3.1 on all cores, any of these, Here's a 3.1 all cores, and there we go. We see the 2090, perfect. And then we have to update the AVX5, or the Xeon Phi one. Once again, since we would optimize for the target at hand, we're gonna disable the TLB. And then this is, this will give us the Xeon Phi. Okay. And these numbers are looking like what we are used to. We're going to let this warm up a little bit more. But it looks like it's probably around 12 billion. So, we'll give it we'll give it 12 billion. I think that's fair, divided by 64 cores, 187.5. So we'll go back to the spreadsheet, and then these, this will be a 187. Apply this to all of these, and then let's, actually, let's double check that that's what we're turboing at. Uh, this is at Phyland. See what megahertz we're running at when we're full bore. Are these actually running at 1.4? I'm really confused. Really confused how that's running at 1.4. I guess maybe it's temporarily getting access while it does the calculation in this thread. Uh, so it's not actually showing the correct rate. It should be 1.1. So. Yeah. Uh, tail. Twenty. Oops. Uh, and fifty. Yeah, I, I still think that's one point one, so I'm I'm fine with that. Um. Okay. So I've updated all of those. One eighty-seven. Perfect. And now, I can go over here, and I can sort by VEC MU megahertz per dollar, A to Z, oops, Z to A. Yeah, these golds would actually probably outperform the phi. Like this is this is assuming I can get them a dirt cheap. Yeah. This is saying on this server. Wow. No way. Oh, uh, that'd be a dual socket. Dual socket running 2.1 megahertz, 16 cores. So this would be a uh, this would be a 32 core 
64 thread server running at 2.1. This saying I would get 90.6. Is that right? Yeah, it should be right. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, dude, where's my scroll bar? Uh, okay. So these are like the top ones here. Okay. Oh, that would be a four-way. I see. That would actually be a 64-core server. Yeah, I'd four-way socket that. How expensive would that be? $8,000 server. Yeah, it'd be an $8,000 server, and I'd get 90... Wow. That ain't bad. Thank you for the follow, Fweff. Or for the sub, Fweff. Thank you so much. Huh. Yeah, I think it might be time to buy uh, one of these bad boys. At least according to my numbers, this would be 90.6. It, it, it would probably be plus minus 10% of that. It would actually be faster than that EC2, EC2 node, except it would cost me probably the value of that EC2 node monthly, <laughs> except it'd be a one-time buy. Why not AMD? AMD doesn't support AVX 512. I mean, it's it's gonna be hard to hard to say no to a a fifty. T Is this the one with the Xeon? This one only has the one AVX five twelve FMA unit. Fuck. I would be willing to spend more money to get an extra FMA unit. 5220, a 6230, it's 10% less cost effective, uh, Xeon 6230, 20-course 40 threads, two FMA units, yeah, this is probably what it'd get. Fuck, where was it? Here. Yeah, the server. Probably the probably the way to go. Ten thousand dollar server, 107, 107 billion risk five instructions per second. Um unless I want to go massively parallel and I wanna get like one of these beefy ass boxes. But they're slightly less cost effective. Vacuum megahertz. Wait. What are these numbers? Oh, that's that's for uh, 6502. That's for 6502. Don't care about those numbers. They don't matter. Um, yeah, because we're seeing on the Xeon 5 7210, yeah, we're seeing about 12, 12 billion instructions a second. And then if we look at, yeah, yeah, this is, this, I'm pretty happy with these numbers.
So like, yeah, if I'm buying these used off eBay, they're more cost effective, but these... I don't know. They're, they're three times more cost effective, but I can't do anything else on them. These W ones also have uh, W2233 or 2223, 2255 Intel. These are, are these the ones with the stupid amount of cash? They have two FMA units. Nope, standard caches, 10 times one. Yeah, it's about the same. Hmm. Yeah, it's really tough to say. Yeah, I think I think that would be the play is to get like a quad socket of these ten thousand dollar server. Like I don't think that'd be too bad. Are they easy to buy? Gold sixty two thirty. Yeah, I think I can source these. They're supposed to be 1894. Yeah, I could get them for that. When would it be more effective to use standalone CPUs? Many cheap CPUs. I mean, there aren't any cheap CPUs that run AVX 512. And this this literally tells me <laughs> This is sorted by what would be most cost effective for AVX 512. <laughs> like, all of these are pretty beefy. They're all going to be like the golds and the Ws. But, yeah, I feel like this, maybe one of these Ws would be good. All right, let's say... Let's say, I don't know what these frequencies are, but I know that these, like, typically are pretty much at parity. Like, they're not, these ones are not really getting down clocked. Uh, 3 3.8, 3.9, 3.7, 3.5, 3.3, 3.0. Uh, and then here, we'll do the same. We'll just copy all these. Literally what we're doing. This, this. Okay. Okay. Um, sort sheet Z to A. Yeah. It's saying the W2295. They're Cascade Lakes. They've got two FMA units. I think these, uh... They don't have Optane support. Who cares? Optane's worthless. These are like super fresh. Yeah, two AVX 512 FMA units, 93 gigs of uh, that, uh, of bandwidth. Like, this is unreal. This is so cost effective. <laughs> I'd be getting 36 bill per per machine, but yeah, it's, it, it is half as cost effective as the eBay, eBay purchased three-year-old used Xeon Phi's.
So, yeah, I think that's probably what I'd go with. I need to make sure that I can get those numbers, so I'll probably contact Intel and ask them for the all-core frequencies. Um, but it's the same microarchitecture with the same AVX units. I am probably within 20% on these, and they're much, much more cost-effective. So I think I'll probably buy one of these. Um... That being said, I could buy, I don't know. I'm better, I'm better off buying, yeah. Like if I bought five of these, uh, I'd have 36 times five, a hundred, yeah. For the same price, I would have 180, um, 180 billion instruction a second for 10 grand, which is honestly not bad at all. So, and what were we getting on, on this? On EC2? That's not EC2. Here we go. This is EC2. So we would get 3.6x more than this. So 27... Yeah, we'd be we'd be running we'd be running at like ninety seven million fuzz cases a second on ten grand of those. So, anyways, I think I'm gonna call it now. It's six in the morning. That was a fun stream. Uh, not as big of perf improvements as I was hoping, but I think it might be time to buy some new servers so I can uh, so I can start doing benchmarks on a different machine because I, I just don't think the Xeon Phi is actually going to work well for these workloads. I think it's I think the Phi would be much better at streaming data, but I think with this random access, it looks like the um, real Xeons just blow it out of the water. And I could use hypervisors on it and do development on those uh, just in many different ways I could leverage uh, having many cores like that. So anyways, see you all around.